starts right now. Your social life is not worth someone else's actual life. Strong words from Mayor Ron Nuremberg as we see more deaths, more hospitalizations, and another record-breaking day of COVID-19 cases. We saw more than 1,300 new cases of coronavirus today. That brings the new total in Bear County to 14,212. The death toll has increased by two tonight for a total of 117. The number of recoveries has increased to more than 5,500, but there are still 8,500 people fighting the illness. And when it comes to hospitalization rates, 1,089 people are in the hospital tonight with 345 in ICU and 192 on ventilators. We have 14% of hospital beds available. That's after 177 more nurses were sent in from around the state to help. Another 73 nurses expected on Monday. And you tonight, Hidalgo County hospitals are at capacity due to COVID-19. This was the emergency alert that went out to residents there, telling people to shelter in place, avoid gatherings of more than 10 people, and only call 911 if absolutely necessary. Hidalgo County is about three and a half hours from here. KRGV reports every hospital in the valley is full and patients are being taken to other areas in Texas. Meanwhile, back here at home, Mayor Ron Nuremberg told people today that they can help with the response to the pandemic by not shooting off fireworks tomorrow. He says first responders are already busy handling calls from COVID-19 patients needing an ambulance to the hospital. So if they are having to make runs tomorrow night because they're trying to put out fires caused by fireworks, that's less opportunity for our, our uh, you know, important resource, our EMS techs, to be out there work in this pandemic. The mayor says first responders had a record number of calls for COVID patients. Yesterday alone, they took 97 calls with 64 of those needing a transport to the hospital. Local leaders are asking you to stay within your own household to keep COVID-19 cases from rising as fast as they already have. A San Antonio family who all came down with the illness is sharing their story and has a message to the community about how small gatherings can change your life. And yeah, the next day I had a 103.3 fever and I kind of knew something was up. Isaiah Castellanos and his wife Vanessa recently tested positive for COVID-19. I used to be a very heavy smoker, um, so I was definitely concerned. Isaiah says Vanessa's parents and brother who live next door also contracted COVID-19. We all um, like hang out in between our houses and on the lawn and stuff like that. They don't know exactly where they contracted the virus from. Isaiah says he was following safety measures. I definitely try to be cautious on like, you know, washing my clothes as soon as I get home taking a shower as soon as I get home, trying to make sure that everything is sanitized. Yesterday, Metro Health Interim Director Dr. Colleen Bridger shared a heartbreaking story during a COVID-19 update. It was about a son and mother who got the virus during her birthday celebration. Both ended up in the hospital. We will get through this, but we need your help to make sure another child never has to share a hospital room with his mother and watch her die from this deadly virus. Dr. Bridger says family is not a protection from the virus. If you don't live with a person, you should assume they could be carrying this virus. This 4th of July weekend, Dr. Bridger says don't gather with people you don't live with. Isaiah agrees. Well, I would just say just, just hold off on it until things clear up. We, we have all the time in the world to celebrate these holidays, but as of right now, it's just not worth the risk. Vanessa and Isaiah's are both in their 20s. While they normally enjoy barbecue and a fireworks show from their front porch, they say they plan to sit this 4th of July out. The wearing of a face mask is now mandatory in public places and punishable by a fine of up to $250 if you aren't following that order. The mandate comes after a continuous rise in COVID cases across the state of Texas and a change of heart from Governor Greg Abbott. While his mandate has been applauded by many, not everyone agrees with his decision. I do think it's important to, well, for everyone to do their part in, you know, stopping the spread of the virus. This is a republic. This is not a monarchy, but Governor Abbott continues to act as King Abbott. That second man is Houston attorney Jared Woodfill, who has sued Harris County's judge for her mask mandate and now plans to do the same to the governor in his order. Today, San Antonio's mayor saying a mask mandate is not an issue over civil liberties, but rather an issue of controlling a pandemic. 
It takes more than a mask to help stop the spread. That's why city and county parks are closed for the holiday weekend to help keep people from crowding together. Boat ramps at Medina Lake Park are also closed. But Canyon Lake has seen increased volume this holiday weekend. That means extra crews working to make sure everyone stays safe. More first responders will be patrolling the lake. We also have an extra uh, medic unit and, uh, and a support unit on the river road. While these responders are equipped to handle on-scene emergencies, they want to send a reminder of how important it is for folks to heed the guidelines issued in the fight against COVID-19. The first is to stay home as much as possible. They can be carriers and even unknowingly pass on COVID-19 to some of our most vulnerable. Children are able to spread the virus to other children, which is why it's important to limit your social circle to your own household. But now a San Antonio nurse is fearing the worst after she believes she exposed her four children to the virus. The night team Stephen Cavazos with her message to other parents. We brought the virus home. <laughs> the adults. Diana Hedinanda says it was a difficult reality to face. The nurse and mother of four began to show symptoms of COVID-19 after her husband tested positive last month. Hedinanda eventually learned she had also contracted the virus. She says by then her husband had already recovered, but her children were her main concern after three of them began to show symptoms. I couldn't even move from bed. I told them you need to go get them tested. Her two older children, both 16 and 10, tested positive. Hedinandas did not have her two younger children tested because of their age. While her five-year-old did not show any symptoms, her eight-month-old had a short-lived fever. But she believes they still may have had the virus. Health experts say less than 50% of children will experience a fever, but most may not show many symptoms. A fever is not an end-all. They may have only one, one symptom or they may have combined symptoms. Dr. Mandy Svatek is a local pediatrician. She says the majority of children diagnosed with COVID-19 recover quickly, but she recommends parents monitor their young ones if they begin to experience a cough or upset stomach. And if they test positive, they should quarantine. If they are positive, they need to stay away. We don't know who it's gonna get hit harder than others. And we are still seeing this. Data from the city shows 2% of hospitalizations are between the ages of 0 to 19. Despite that number being low, Dr. Svatek says it's important parents let their children know they can slow the spread. They'll understand that they don't want to be spreading this and making anybody sicker. Heading on this and her family have recovered, but she warns other parents to take their children's health into consideration. You just feel so powerless as a parent. They got that because, you know, we got them exposed. Stephen Cavasso's KSAT 12 News. Those looking for testing, the testing site at Pre-K for SA West has been canceled. And there will be a pause at the pop-up walk-up testing site at Kazan Middle School tomorrow for the 4th of July holiday. On Sunday, it will continue to be up and running from 10 in the morning to 2 in the afternoon. 300 free tests will be conducted. This is on Gillette Boulevard. The walk-up testing site will also be up and running Monday and Tuesday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. as well. A reminder now about voting. The polls will continue to be closed tomorrow for the 4th of July holiday, but there will still be time to cast your vote in the runoff elections for Bear County. Early voting will continue through next Friday, July 10th. Election day is July 14th. You can find polling information and take a look at the sample ballots right now on our website. Just go to ksat.com slash vote 2020. Tonight, a vigil held for Fort Hood soldier Vanessa Guillen. People gathered at Veterans Memorial Park outside of the Tobin Center to honor her memory. There were balloons, stuffed animals, and signs calling for justice. According to a criminal complaint, Guillen was killed by another Fort Hood soldier before her body was mutilated and buried. The soldier accused in her death died by suicide, and a woman accused of helping to get rid of the evidence remains in custody. One woman we spoke to says she suffered sexual assault in the Air Force and wants to be a voice for Vanessa. We also have um, to tell our young kids, our young generation, when they're at the recruitment office, ask them about those hard questions like, is there sexual assault? Is there racism? Is there discrimination? We need to get those recruiters that are in the forefront to, to be transparent about what really goes on in the military. The group Circle of Arms plans to hold a march tomorrow and gather at San Fernando Cathedral on Sunday. 
A shooting at a mall leaves an eight-year-old boy dead and three people injured. It happened in Alabama this afternoon. Police say among the three people injured are a girl and two adults. A motive for the shooting at the River Chase Galleria has not been released. It's unclear if any arrests have been made. Still ahead on the night beat, it is a yearly tradition, the famous hot dog eating contest and the couple who is training for tomorrow's big event. That's still coming up. And it's more than just fireworks, the safety measures that go with them. What added measure the fire marshal will be considering amid the pandemic. Plus, what the VA is experiencing with Military City USA now in the thick of this pandemic. It's next on the Night Week. Another plea tonight, this one to veterans from the chief executive of the South Texas VA hospital. The hospital is ramping up staff and beds and the number of hospitalizations have tripled in just about the past two weeks. The night team's Petty Santos now tells us they are preparing about 100 new beds specifically for COVID patients and more than half are already full. Use the, the weekend wisely and please make the right decision. The chief executive of the South Texas Veterans Healthcare System says the San Antonio Hospital now has 57 patients admitted with COVID-19 and is monitoring 360 plus others that have tested positive. We have had a number of those veterans, as many as five to 10 sometimes a day, I think yesterday would be a good, great example, who were previously seen in the ER, were discharged, sent home for self-monitoring, and as those symptoms continue to worsen, they've had to come back. The hospital renovated the fifth, sixth, and now the seventh floor to prepare for an expected surge in the coming weeks. Up to 97 beds will be available. Eight patients are on ventilators, 47 other ventilators are on hand, and 46 more will arrive next week. Staff from other hospitals have also been dispatched. Confirmed uh, that are coming into detail, we're somewhere around 18. Uh, but uh, we've asked for uh, double to triple that number uh, as we continue to look at some of the surge predictions uh, that are taking us through early August. He expects all beds will likely be full in two weeks. The San Antonio VA hospital is second in the number of active cases in the nation, but number one in the number of hospitalizations. Contract tracing shows the veterans are young and got it through social gatherings. We just encourage everyone uh, to not use this long weekend uh, to um, uh, go to large social events, um, protect yourself, protect those around you. The hospital reports 10 COVID-related deaths. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. Enrolled veterans who need to see a doctor are encouraged to use the website myhealth.va.gov or you can call 877-537-7348 before you head to the hospital. Four officers now off the job in Aurora, Colorado, following a photo. Some found it disturbing, saying it reenacts the chokehold police applied to Elijah McLean, who later died. Interim Chief Vanessa Wilson said she fired three officers for the incident and a fourth resigned. The union director says Wilson rushed her decision, but Wilson says the people involved with the photo no longer deserve to wear a badge. The FBI, U.S. Justice Department, and Colorado's Attorney General have all been involved in the investigation of McLean's death. As Confederate memorials around the country are removed, some are fighting to rename a bridge in Alabama. One former lawmaker says the Confederate general it is named after also had ties to the Ku Klux Klan. The Edmund Pettus Bridge is an iconic symbol of the voting rights movement that bears the name of a Confederate general. Former state senator Hank Sanders Spear spearheaded an effort to uh, change the name of the bridge five years ago in the state legislature, but that effort was unsuccessful. Sanders is hoping that this time will be different. I'm pushing for, for, the, for the name uh, Bridge to Freedom, the name that every person who ever fought for voting rights can see themselves in it. There are some who disagree. Still, the historic bridge is one of the first places many stop when they visit Selma. The Edmund Pettus Bridge was built back in 1940 as a crossing over the Alabama River. It is a registered national landmark. Multiple professional fireworks shows were canceled, but SeaWorld and Fiesta Texas are continuing to be open for the 4th of July. They have lowered their capacity and added safety measures to help keep COVID from spreading. But for the majority of people, many might be hoping to use fireworks on their own. We're now hearing America might be running out of them. Consumer fireworks sales, including sparklers and firecrackers, have more than doubled. Imports from China, which supplies more than 90% of the world's fireworks, stalled 
earlier this year because the pandemic forced most of the factories to close. One expert predicts by July 5th, there probably won't be many fireworks available until China can start producing and shipping again. Coming up, the local fire marshal is dealing with more than just safety measure checks this holiday season. What else they will be keeping an eye out for as fireworks are set off. Meanwhile, taking a live look outside with live cam on this Friday before the 4th of July. Katie, as expected, it is hotter than a firecracker out there. Yes, definitely. It has been hot the past few days, and that trend will continue as we get into the holiday weekend. I like this KSAT Connect picture. Simple, but it proves the point. This was south of Castroville this afternoon. Looks like uh, between about 102 and 103 this afternoon. And love this one as well. They've got the right idea. This will be a good spot to be over the course of the weekend. And here's a look at your 4th of July. A late morning into the afternoon forecast. By the middle of the morning, we'll be in the mid 80s. But by the afternoon tomorrow, under full sunshine, we're looking at high temperatures in the triple digits for a lot of us. And even into tomorrow evening, it'll be staying toasty 96 at 7 o'clock. But yeah, a lot of sunshine. And I do want to mention that the UV index is going to be at extreme levels tomorrow. So what this means is that if you go outside, sit by the pool, and you don't put sunscreen on in less than 10 minutes skin damage will start to occur. So the UV index will be extreme both tomorrow, Saturday and again on Sunday. So can't stress it enough. If you're going to be spending a lot of time outside this weekend, make sure you stay hydrated and keep that sunscreen close by as well. 98 our high temperature today and really that's not too far removed from our average high this time of year. It is July. Our average high is 94 records this time of year generally are above 100 degrees and I don't think we'll be breaking any records over the next couple of days, but we will start to get into that triple digit territory this weekend. Still plenty warm out there tonight. 86 at the airport, a little bit better up in the hill country. 80 in Fredericksburg, but look at Del Rio. You guys still sitting at 95 at this hour, so plenty warm out there and humidity after dropping off a bit this afternoon is really going to start to build back in overnight. Otherwise, very quiet out there. There was a cluster of thunderstorms moving out of Louisiana that tried to make a run at Houston. It fell apart before it got there, but it did bring in a little bit of cloud cover. So there is some additional cloud cover lingering off to the east of 35, but otherwise very quiet all across Texas this evening. It's really kind of funny. You can kind of see where high pressure has a control of the weather here. It is centered off to the west, but on the east side of this high, we've got a ton of sinking air here over a good portion of Texas, and that's what keep that's what's keeping things really rain and cloud free this evening. Now, as we get into the weekend, not much is going to change in regards to this high pressure. It's still going to have a pretty good grip on our weather, but Gradually, especially as we get into Sunday and then into the early part of next week, that heat high will start to move a bit farther away and we'll find ourselves a little out of its grip a little bit more. So we get into Sunday and even into Monday of next week, low pressure developing well to our east. There will be better chances of rain there, but we will kind of find ourselves stuck between this high and this low. That means we could get some little weak disturbances dropping down through Texas and that'll offer just very low end chances of rain beginning Monday of next week. It's not much, but at least it's something. Tonight, a rain-free night becoming partly cloudy overnight, closer to the pre-dawn hours of tomorrow morning. So we'll start off tomorrow morning with a few clouds, but then bright sunshine in the afternoon. Then that heats us up into the triple digits. Do keep in mind, though, this weekend, things could still look a bit hazy at times. We do still have some lingering Saharan dust in the air, um, so a little bit hazy for the next couple of days, but that will really start to thin out early next week. There's a really low end rain chances, nothing to write home about, but some isolated storms could be possible. I think better day for that will be on Tuesday. Otherwise, staying toasty guys. Thank you, Katie. All right, the Spurs have returned to their practice facility, but reporters and photographers have not been allowed back. We in. are not allowed in to their like, mini bubble, if you just that's what right. you want to call it, environment. It's only staff members are allowed inside, but we're still getting our first look at inside the Spurs facility. Thanks to the Spurs staff that is with the team. We'll let you know how that worked out. And the first NASCAR driver to test positive. Pretty big name <laughs> coming up. I mean, I was guarding my dogs in the kitchen, um, trying to cut them off. So hopefully that helped. But you know, you're just going to have to just get used to it and get after it. Yeah, how else can Derek White keep up his defensive skills during the COVID-19 pandemic in big board sports?
Here it is, your first look at inside the Spurs practice facility. Since they returned to workouts, the only people allowed to photograph the workouts are members of the Spurs video staff. We'll be traveling with the team to Orlando from the Silver and Black to Par for Florida this coming Thursday. In fact, this is your first look at Lonnie Walker as well on video since he cut off his signature hairdo after his courageous revelation about being sexually abused and raped as a child. Derek White celebrated his 26th birthday yesterday. He was asked today how he was able to stay in shape during the lockdown. It wasn't easy. Um, I definitely came back a little out of shape. I think everybody did. Um, it's hard to mimic a basketball shape without actually playing basketball. So um, we had a bike at home. Um, we did that. Tried to do anything that I could to stay in shape, um, eat right, do whatever it takes. Um, there was uh, a couple of times you get into a gym, but that was kind of rare throughout the whole um, quarantine. So. Um, just staying at home and working out like everybody else was doing. You can see him actually cleaning in the background there with LaMarcus Aldridge out for the rest of the season due to the surgery on his right shoulder. The Spurs are forced to go out and sign another big man to help their restart of the 2019-2020 season. Later this month, Tyler Zeller is the man they chose. has not played in the NBA since he was released by the Nuggets back in October before the start of the season. But Zeller understands that the restart of the league is also a huge opportunity to jumpstart his own career. So what is he going to show the Spurs in these eight games to try and make the playoffs? Really just... You know, hopefully I can find my way into this team. I'll, I'll be with them in training camp in December or January, whenever that comes. But um, really just try to find my way in, you know, show I can still play, um, be able to, you know, do what I do inside, but also be able to stretch it out on the outside a little bit. And, um, just just find my way back in in some way. All right, good to have you here with the Spurs here. Here's a look at their schedule. They're open up on July the 31st against Sacramento. That huge game right out of the gate on August the 2nd against Memphis to try and catch up to that last playoff position. Then it's Philadelphia, Denver, Utah, New Orleans live on KSAT 12 on August the 9th. And then Houston and Utah wraps it up. The Miami Heat have become the latest team to have to shut down their practice facility after a second player tested positive for the coronavirus. The Heat will also have players tested to satisfy NBA requirements, but will not reopen their gym before departing for the bubble at Walt Disney. Disney World in Orlando. He guard Derek Jones Jr. tested positive for COVID-19 last week. Has been working on the NBA return to play protocol. We don't know the name of the second player for Miami. A NASCAR star and a Major League Baseball players. The latest to test positive for the coronavirus. Next. Seven-time NASCAR champion Jimmy Johnson has tested positive for the coronavirus, becoming the first driver in any NASCAR series to test positive. That means he will miss this weekend's race at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway after his wife, Chani, tested positive after experiencing allergy-like symptoms. This is supposed to be his last race at the old brickyard before retiring. 31 Major League Baseball players have tested positive for COVID-19. Just about the first round of testing, according to the league and the players' union today, seven staff members also tested positive for a total of 3,185 samples that were collected. That represents 1.2% compared to the NBA's 5.3% rate of positive tests in 16 out of 302 players. Mission season may have been canceled, but there's still baseball the Wolf tonight amid strict social distancing regulations. This is what we found when we arrived at the Wolf tonight for the Flying Chocolates home opener against Arcadiana, where ushers must see you to make sure you are masked up and far enough apart. Mama Pena returning to the Wolf, along with baseball as the Flying Chocolates stays their home opener against the Cane Cutters Arcadiana in the Texas Collegiate League. Big fourth inning for the Chancas, down 3-2. Not for long, our guest at six today, Kike McDonald out of Antonio, Mississippi State with the bases loaded, dribbled to third, but the throw to first is off the mark. Two runs score to make it 4-3 to three. Chancas, falling a wild pitch to put the Chancas up 5-3. to three. Connor Shepard down the line at the hot corner, and that brings home McDonald to make it 6-3. to three. Chancas with a five-run fourth. Final from the Wolf, they win it 7-4. to four. Last night at the Wolf, a doubleheader for high school baseball seniors to get a big send-off in the nightcap for 6A seniors all-stars known as Team Stripes go on to win 9-6, but the score didn't matter as much as the chance to play with their friends again. It was bittersweet, you know, I haven't uh, had the chance to play with high school teammates since uh, March, so it was good to see everyone again. I haven't seen them in a few months, so it was fun. It felt great. Did one last time with them. Yep. Not many chances he can do that. I mean, I didn't think another chance could happen with him. At home, this is the only thing I was looking forward to, to be honest, and it was a great opportunity to be an all-star today. I mean, it was great that they did this for us because, yeah, the season did end tragically, but we got to play one last time, and it was awesome. You can see right there, after the game, players and fans were treated to some fireworks, thanks to Red McCombs for the big sponsorship. And by the way, speaking of fireworks, they had them tonight at the Wolf for the Flying Chancas. They'll have them tomorrow for Independence Day as well.
Great to see some live baseball being played. <laughs> it's again. very good to see, yes. And it was a lot of great atmosphere out there, right? Yeah, it was. I tell you, and I was telling you earlier, I have not been out physically in any live shot since March the 10th when the Spurs beat the Dallas Mavericks at the AT&T Center. So it's good to get out. That's awesome. Thanks, Greg. Sure. New numbers coming in as the coronavirus continues to make its way across the U.S. That's next on The Night Beat. Some grim new numbers in the coronavirus pandemic. For the second day in a row here in the U.S., more than 50,000 people have tested positive for COVID-19. And now there is extra concern about social distancing as we head into the holiday weekend. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest. With popular beaches closed for the weekend in COVID-19 hotspots like Texas, Florida and California, this year's July 4th celebrations will look very different as the deadly virus surges across the nation. It's not the beaches per se that are the problem, it's the crowds that are created. Crowds are not good. Florida, with more than 9,400 new infections, nearly 15% of all tests coming back positive. Employees at 30 public supermarkets testing positive. Miami, with a 20% rate of positivity, a 10 p.m. curfew in effect indefinitely to try and stop the spread. What happened is that when somebody's at, in, at home for six weeks, they get tired and they really get stir crazy. So they're out in the streets. So people are fighting using the mask, social distancing. To ensure social distancing, up to 80% of fireworks displays in the U.S. have been canceled. Some local leaders, like the mayor of Lancaster, California, are defiant. This is America, and this is our birthday, and it is the worst year that we have ever experienced. The only thing that will stop it is handcuffs. Authorities in Tempe, Arizona, are investigating a bar for allegedly allowing employees who tested positive to keep working. ICU's there at 91% capacity. It's one of 26 states seeing a rise in hospitalizations. Phoenix and San Antonio, Texas, are using pediatric ICU's for adults as they run out of beds. Meantime, Texas Governor Greg Abbott has made masks mandatory statewide despite weeks of hesitation. And now a new warning that the virus may have mutated. While it is not believed to be deadlier, it may spread more easily. The virus replicates better and may be more transmissible. A new COVID-19 survey shows nearly half of Americans are extremely concerned their communities reopen too soon. At least 19 states have now reversed or paused their reopening plans, imposing strict new rules. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. All right, this is usually the time in the show for our KSAC Q&A, a chance to bridge the gap between you and the experts right here in our city. With so much changing on a daily basis, we wanted to revisit with this week's guests as they respond to the evolving situation around the pandemic. Tonight's roundup centers around testing, hospital capacity, voting, and keeping yourself protected. We take our questions and your questions to local experts and get them answered. That's the purpose behind KSAT Q&A. And we are pleased that on Wednesday nights, uh, Mayor Ron Nuremberg joined. I, I want to ask you really quickly about testing. Where are we in terms of testing? I know that we've spoken to a lot of folks who are having trouble finding a test. Where, where are we right now in terms of being able to, to, to test people on a mass scale? Uh, we have roughly, uh, in public and private providers, roughly 6,000 tests uh, available on any given day here in San Antonio, going through the labs, et cetera. Uh, labs, uh, tests are available uh, through walk-up sites. They're available through private labs and private providers. They're available through some of the hospitals. So they're widely available, and they don't require an appointment. They don't require uh, a doctor's order or insurance or even money to take them. Uh, we need to make sure, though, that people are able to um, get the information and, and, and get to the test. So that's really what the challenge is. We are pleased to be joined by Dr. Robert A. Frolickstein, who is a frequent guest on this segment. Thank you again for joining us, doctor. And right off the top, what's the biggest change that you're seeing in your particular emergency room, which is Methodist Hospital? It's a lot more, a lot more patients suffering from the effects of the COVID. Um, you know, we're probably, the last few days, I think we admitted 65, 64, 65 patients, and, and that's, uh, that's a big change from, you know, even a few weeks ago. Uh, and for every patient we're 
admitting there's probably three, four, or five that we are able to send home with follow-up, close follow-up, and that sort of thing. Are the, are the ages differing as well in people that you're seeing get COVID? Yeah, I think so. I think it is definitely a younger younger crowd than early on in the, uh, you know, in, in March. Um, it's definitely a younger population. And, and that's true of the admitted patients as well, though. Many of the admitted patients are younger. Dr. Berggren, uh, several weeks ago when you were last on the show, you told us about the three P's. Remind our viewers what the three P's are and why it's important. This is very serious and very important, but the three P's help you remember what it is you're supposed to do. So there, it stands for prevent, protect, and provide. So for prevention, you know you're supposed to wash your hands, wear your mask, and keep six feet apart from people. We, I saw a poster today that reminded us to practice safe sixing. Get it? Six feet apart. Um, secondly, to protect, we stay home, we avoid crowds, and we create a social bubble. What does that mean? That means defining very carefully who it is you're going to be in contact with, and don't let that become a very large group. Maybe 10, but no more than that and it needs to be consistent. So it really should be primarily the people who live under your household roof um, and maybe one or two others. And it shouldn't extend beyond that and it certainly shouldn't extend beyond your social bubble for this 4th of July weekend. And the third P is provide. What does that mean? We need you to provide information. If you're symptomatic, get tested, but then go ahead and tell your close contacts that you're sick so that they know that they should be quarantined and potentially tested if they become symptomatic. And also look for phone calls um, that are coming from the 210 area code with the prefix 270. That is a contact tracer. And they are looking to help you and to help our community by letting people know who's sick and who's been exposed to others who are sick so they can quarantine. So prevent, protect, provide. We all need to do it. The hospitals are at capacity and becoming overwhelmed, and we're starting to see some very difficult decisions needing to be made about who gets treatment. And as an illustration of that, this week we did run out of the drug remdesivir for a while. We're getting more, but we did run out, and that will happen again unless we keep our numbers down, and we don't want to see this happen to our community. ASAC Q&A is Jackie Callanan. She is the Bear County Elections Administrator. Thank you so much for joining us, Jackie. Kind of talk about what people will expect if they didn't go out today to vote and, and they head out over the next few days to do the early voting. What can they expect as far as those safety precautions that are now in place? Yes, well, for the election officials, we have provided a large plastic screen that will go in front of the qualifying table so that it will be contactless voting. The election officials will have masks and gloves and face shields, their own hand sanitizer. We have wipes for the units and for the tables. And as the voter enters, there'll be a person stationed there so that the voter now will use hand sanitizer. And then they will get a set of food prepared plastic gloves or a pencil so that they can process through with, again, contactless voting. They'll go to the qualifying table. The election officials still need to see that photo ID, but we've discovered and we worked on it that we can scan their license right through the plastic again so that no one has to touch each other's license. Then they'll sign, they'll get their ballot card, go over to the unit and now if they're in plastic gloves they're voting using that plastic glove or if they've chosen to have a pencil they'll use the eraser end as a stylus if the vote if your viewers would like to go to our website they'll be able to see the hours and the times the dates the places to take advantage of early voting since the governor has given us this additional week A look back at this week's Q&A. Still ahead on the night beat, a couple preparing for tomorrow's big hot dog eating contest. A practice run that had one person beating a personal best coming up. And every year, the fire marshal's office is tasked with keeping an eye out for safety measures around fireworks. 
but there is an extra measure the office is taking this year. We'll explain next. They are, of course, the centerpiece of many 4th of July celebrations, fireworks. They can be fun, but the fire marshal's office reminds you they are not toys and must be used with caution. It is also a good idea to keep water on hand since COVID-19 has forced the cancellation of many public fireworks show this year. There will likely be more private fireworks displays. Mayor Ron Nuremberg has advised against this and suggested watching displays on TV instead, but we know what people are going to do. And if you're outside the city limits and using fireworks, be aware the fire marshal's office will be out checking for safety measures and something else in the age of COVID. The fire marshals will be going out along with other additional personnel to ensure that people are complying with Judge Wolf's executive order. That order says gathering should be limited to no more than 10 people within your household and no large outdoor gatherings. There is also a chance to change things up this 4th of July while celebrating within your own household and in your own backyard are encouraged. How about an outdoor movie? Consumer Reports just tested mini projectors ranging in price from about $100 to $500. The best one in their test for picture quality was this LG model. It also has some useful features like Bluetooth and wireless mirroring, which lets you send video directly to the projector from a smartphone or a tablet. It also has a built-in TV tuner so you can connect an antenna and get free over-the-air broadcast TV. Consumer Reports also named the AAXA Pico projector as their bargain pick. And if you need a screen, don't be afraid to break out the bed sheet. Just pull it tight and avoid the wrinkles. All right, let's get serious here. What is a 4th of July without a hot dog? Well, the American dish is so popular, it's also part of an annual contest. Of course, the Nathan's famous hot dog eating contest. It's happening tomorrow, and one couple is practicing for the main event. As Marissa Alter found out, practice makes perfect. And in this case, it'll probably make you really full, too. All right, let's go. Nick Weary and Mickey Sudo are spending some quality time together in the kitchen, grilling up a little more than just a snack. Well, we met two years ago um, on the 4th of July at the gym of the hotel where they put us up for the hot dog eating contest. But we started dating a year ago. That would be the annual Nathan's famous hot dog eating contest. You could call them the first couple of competitive eating. It's great to have somebody to say like, hey, how did you feel after those 223 chicken wings? You know, like that's very hard for your average person to relate to. And this weekend, they're headed back to where it all began. It's bigger than anything else. It draws yeah. the best of the best. Yeah, that's our, our Super Bowl or our WrestleMania or our World Series. Only Sudo will be stepping up to the plates this July 4th, but Weary is still putting in the training with her. We stop by their final practice before Saturday's competition. He's been more fired up for practices than I've been. You know, whereas I'm dragging my heels, he's pushing me to consistently do better. Today, that means 90 hot dogs between the two of them, plated contest style and a 10 minute time limit. Sudo has won the women's title every year since 2014. She's got six consecutive titles there, um, going for number seven. No pressure. Which, yeah, which will put her second all time. Uh, so on the Mount Rushmore of competitive eating, the Nathan stage has kind of cemented her place there. Sudo's personal best is 41 hot dogs, but she's hungrier for more than just a win. She hopes to best the women's record of 45 hot dogs, something she's done plenty of times at home. For some reason, it hasn't translated on the 4th, but this year I expect to do better than ever, and I'm looking to take that record down. 50 hot dogs with time to spare. I don't think she's scratched the surface of what she's capable of at the table. The contest will be inside this year without a crowd and with fewer competitors, but you'll be able to catch it live on ESPN tomorrow afternoon. <laughs> and there is also a chance to change things up this 4th of July while celebrating within your own household and in your own backyard are encouraged. How about an outdoor movie? But Katie, to, is this weekend going to be great for maybe an outdoor movie? Uh, it's going to be a little warm. 
Yeah. A little. A little. <laughs> it's on the warm side, but if you want to get that setup going, more power to you. Tim, you all watch outdoor movies, right? Yeah, we do. I was off uh, last week several days, and I watched several movies out there. My, my one I always like to watch right around this time of year is Jaws, and we're floating around in the pool watching that. <laughs> That's always a good one to watch. Ooh, nice. But, uh, yes, nice setup yeah. to have. The mosquitoes, so, though, were a problem. Yeah, there's that, and it's just... It's just warm out there. It's going to be very hot in the afternoons, but even in the evening when the sun is down, it's still going to be very warm. This was going to be following the, the hot dog. You just can't look away from that, can you? The video, fascinating, fascinating. If you want to get outside next couple of days, grill up a few dogs of your own. It's going to be hot out there. High temperatures each afternoon, triple digits, and plenty of sunshine to go around. I do want to show you the time lapse from today. If you look over on the horizon, there was a little haze to things today. I actually think it looked more hazy yesterday than it did today, but we still do have a little bit of lingering Saharan dust out there. Uh, and you may notice a little bit of a haze as we get into the weekend, but I do want to show you how we expect uh, this dust to begin to thin out over the next couple of days. So here's where we stand tonight. That dark brown color, uh, that's indicating very dense dust. That's what really makes things look very hazy. And if you think back to last Saturday, we had a big plume of this dark brown color really across a good portion of South Texas. That's when it was just incredibly hazy out there, and we also had some lower air quality. Uh, at times, some of this dense dust will be around this weekend, but a lot of it I expect to be off to the east of San Antonio. But just keep in mind tomorrow, even into Sunday during the afternoons, it could look a bit hazy out there. As we get into Monday and Tuesday of next week, this dust will really, really continue to thin out, and much of next week, I really don't think you'll even notice the dust at all. How However, there are some more plumes of this dust that continue to stream across the Atlantic and into the Caribbean, so it could at least be later this month, uh, maybe not until later this month, that we see that dust go away completely. We'll continue to keep you updated, of course. Very warm out there, 83 now. We've dropped down a few degrees, still in the 90s from Carrizo Springs up to Del Rio. Look at our dew point numbers. They're higher down to the southeast. For a lot of us, these numbers dropped off nicely this afternoon, and we'll see that happen again tomorrow. And what that will allow for, as you see here, dew points dropping into the 50s across much of the area, that's going to help our high temperatures to just shoot up that much more. So we're looking at, I think, more triple digits on the board tomorrow afternoon for your 4th of July. Forecast 100 here in San Antonio, some upper 90s in the Hill Country, and even a little bit hotter than that down to the southwest. So 75 in the morning, 100 tomorrow afternoon. Bottom line for this weekend, high and feeling hazy and we'll get by rain free with the heat high hanging pretty close. Now by early next week as that moves a bit farther to the west, we'll have the opportunity for some low end shower and storm chances to work in. I think primarily during the afternoon hours as we get into Monday through Wednesday of next week. Rainfall coverage will be low, but at least it's a little something and that'll bring our high temperatures down a few degrees. Guys, looks like summer. All right, your night beat week in review is next. What a week. Bear County saw its highest single day rise in COVID-19 cases this week. The effort to keep cases down around the holiday weekend continues. And the search for those responsible in a case of vandalism continues. It's on this week's Night Beat in Review. Mural in honor of a child killed in what became a high profile child abuse murder case defaced. Tonight, that mural, which is dedicated to preventing child abuse, has been fixed, but outrage lingers from those who helped bring the art to life. We're asking that whoever did this come forward to us personally. All we're asking is that you either help us clean up or just apologize. But if you don't come forward, we will be pressing charges. And Mask effectiveness spurring all kinds of conversations nationwide. Some posts circulate late online claim that you can smell things like food or smoke through a cloth mask, the covering will not filter the coronavirus. We ran it through our KSAT trust index. Experts say that is false, and the reason has to do with particle size. These are extremely tiny molecules. Although the COVID-19 virus is a microscopic microorganism, it still is much, much more complex than the molecules that would cause odors to be smelled. There's no way that you could prevent an odor from coming into your nose uh, unless uh, you weren't able to breathe. Any mask with greater than two layers is gonna reduce the chance of transmitting COVID-19 
uh, at least by half. The city and county closing parks in hopes of bringing down the surge in coronavirus cases here at home. Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf saying he does not want a repeat of what happened on Memorial Day. Hospital CEOs in our area saying it will take about two weeks to see a change if we all act today. The urgent message coming ahead of the 4th of July, uh, be people being told not to gather with people outside of their households. It has to be done at an individual level. If you love your country, you will wear a mask and you will do what the mayor and the judge have told us to do. What you do today will determine what happens two weeks from now, whether you're in the emergency room with no beds in the end. Okay, finally tonight, a Texas man attempting to qualify for the Guinness Book of World Records for the oldest tandem skydive. Al Blaschke took the 14,000-foot leap with Skydive Spaceland San Marcos at 103 years and 180 days old. It wasn't Blaschke's first time skydiving. He had that experience back in 2017 to celebrate his 100th birthday. Guinness now needs to officially verify the record he did land safely. Wonderful. It looks like he did it on a day where the dust was especially dense. You could kind of see Yeah, I see it in the sky there. <laughs> <laughs> but good, good for him. Hot and hazy this weekend. Low in rain chances early next week. That'll bring our temperatures down a little bit. Just we'll keep little. our fingers crossed. That's it for the night beat. Good morning. San Antonio starts tomorrow at 6. Good night.